now, if you'll excuse me, I believe my flight will be taking off. Okay, so we have requested permission to take off. I have contacted flight control. Unfortunately, the head of flight control is my ex-wife, and she despises Captain Smiling Jack. So, uh, you know, usually this takes just a few minutes as she allows every other plane to take off before us. So, we may be here just a bit longer due to the bitterness of the most evil woman on Earth. On a more positive note, those of you on the right side of the plane will have an extraordinary view of a cuddly, wonderful family of baby duckies. We'll be underway in just a few minutes. Thank you for your patience. I, um, I guess my flight will not be taking off, so, uh, so maybe we can talk some strategy. Oh, oh, Sonny, are you going to take that guitar out again? I, I just love it when you play that guitar music. Oh, oh thanks, ma'am. Uh, here we go. What was the first chord? I think it's a D. Part 3. The Hamster. How to win the game. So as I mentioned, way back in the hook, when I thought I was going to be leaving on my flight, very shortly, which appears to be not the case, the goal of this game is very simple. Get stock down in the companies that are worth the most by the end of the game. So you can do that one of two ways. You can sort of build some of them up yourself, or you can just see what other players have built up and get stock in those companies and play them. One thing I've learned from playing this game as well as its sister game, Union Pacific, is that it's almost impossible to win if you're doing all of your own work. If you're just gonna try to play your own game and get green stock and play a lot of green planes and then get purple stock and play a lot of purple planes, you're probably going to lose because you just don't have enough turns to keep up with everybody else. You need to diversify. This game's a lot about, it's not just about getting the first place points, but getting a lot of second place and third place points. So pay attention to the stock shares on the board and look for opportunities to snag up those second and third places. The winner is not the person who gets the most first places, but the overall points. So, also think about working together with a few other players on companies to mutual benefit. Next, a very important consideration is how much investment you want to put into Air Abacus. The three first places for Air Abacus over the three scoring rounds are 4, then 8, then 16. So if you add that up, that is 28 victory points. In a game where a winning score is somewhere around 100, 28 points is a lot. So the thing is, if, if you can get that cheaply, you're probably going to win. If you're able to maintain first place with just three or four shares and nobody fights you for it, you'll probably win the game. So if you can do that, more power to you. But realize that if another player is doing that and they're getting it cheaply, a few of you are really going to have to make them fight for that. And if you don't, you're going to pretty much forfeit the game to that. So most of the players need to be involved in that air abacus fight because it can be overwhelmingly strong if it is not contested. A lot of times people get involved early in that game. That first third of the game happens quick. And so no one gets that first air abacus to get the cheap four points. The first scoring happens quickly. And if you want to snag those air abacuses, it can be a good thing to do, remembering it's a two-turn process to get it down before that first scoring flips up. Remember, you can discard cards that you've played if they're not going to help you at all. And that can be a good jump because you're going to run out of stock cards of a way to get more of those air abacus. One more sneaky trick with Air Abacus. Remember, there's only 20 shares of Air Abacus. If you want to run those down so that other people can't beat you with Air Abacus, you are allowed to discard Air Abacus shares to get more Air Abacus shares. A sneaky trick to dry up the supply of Air Abacus stock. You know my famous strategy advice, do what the other players aren't doing. It doesn't really work in this game. <laughs> I hate to say it, but this game a lot of times breaks that rule because you can't really say, ooh, no one's going after white. I'm going to go after white and do it all on my own. And if you do that, that's kind of a loser strategy. This game, really the opposite can be true. A lot of times in this game, you want to do what the other players are doing. This air abacus, though, does lend itself to that. If not a lot of people are going for air abacus, you need to jump on that. 
And the opposite of, of that is true. If all other four players get involved in an air abacus fight, you may just want to stay out of it completely because it can be a real time investment to sink two or three turns or four turns into getting those air abacus shares down on the board. Finally, carefully manage your resources. This game, the nice thing about the way the turns work, it's really neat how Alan Moon set up this cycle of trying to have continuous cash flow. The game forces you to place shares from your hand as an efficient way to get more money without spending a turn just taking cash. So I, I think that's pretty clever. You have to sort of reveal your intentions by dropping those shares down. But by doing that, you can sort of keep a cycle to keep enough money to keep afloat. Play shares, lay some planes. Play shares, lay some planes. At some point, you probably will have to take that action to take $8. But if you're careful about when you play your shares, that can prevent you from having to take that action too often. As sometimes it can feel like sort of a wasted action. One thing that new players sort of don't catch on to for a little bit is that in order to take a share card, if you're waiting for a share card to pop up to get the majority in a share, you need to have at least $3 cash in hand. If you don't have $3 cash, you're not going to be able to play a plane, so you're not going to be able to pick up a share card. So if you're waiting for a share card to pop up, keep in mind you need to have some money in the bank to be able to snag that when it pops up. Not only is your cash a resource, but also your hand of shares are a resource. And so you have to use them wisely of knowing you know, when to discard shares to get those air abacus, when to lay down shares or when to build up so you can sort of play multiple shares at once. Manipulating when to use those shares and when to drop down those shares is an, an important decision in the game. And not only do you need to manage your resources, but timing is a critical element in this game. One of the really interesting decisions is whether to play just one plane or two planes when you add planes to the board. A lot of times players will play just one plane when we talk about managing your shares. If you play two planes a lot of the times, once you blow all the shares in your hand, there's not a great way to get them back. So that's why a lot of times players will play one plane so they draw one share. Now there is a timing element there. If you think that a scoring round is coming up, then it may be the time to drop two on a turn. Or if dropping two is going to get you to that bonus marker, do it. I think I could say generally that this is a hallmark of what makes Alan Moon's game so great, is that he forces you to make some difficult decisions on timing. Each turn, you can just take one simple action, but what to take. And that timing element is what makes Airlines Europe such a great game. Speaking of timing, um, I really would like to get off this plane. I'm hoping at any... Hello, everyone. Uh, this is your captain, and we have been cleared for takeoff. And we will be doing that right after we refuel. We have used quite a bit of fuel. Um, waiting here on the jetway so we'll get the fuel tanker over here also we are required by airport regulations to give you the safety presentation within 15 minutes of takeoff time so for your pleasure our flight attendants will give an encore presentation demonstrating how to put on a seat belt and what to do with those safety masks just in case you forgot then following that barring any interruptions by duckies or a horrible, horrible women who ruined your life and left you in pieces with nothing left to comfort you but the occasional glimpse of baby duckies. Thank you so much for flying HTP Airline. Oh, for the love of Pete. Bye now. See you later. Yeah, yeah, thanks for nothing. Well, hello! Hi. I'm Captain Smiling Jack. You know why they call me Smiling Jack? Is it cause you smile a lot? Can't get nothing by you. Can I treat you to a fine meal at Chili's Express? Ooh. Well, that's gonna about do it for today's episode. I wanna remind you to join and participate in the guild Check out our teaching guides, stop by and rate the show on iTunes, and consider making a PayPal donation. And I once again want to say a big thank you to Randall Rasmussen for creating the video portion of this episode. But for now, 
I'll say so long. And until next time, I hope you will learn, teach, and play great games. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Ryan Sturm for the How to Play Podcast.